everyone, my name is Dina. Today we're going to be doing a bracelet. It's called the Marquee March. So gather up some different colors and supplies that are listed below. And don't forget, you can use colors that are from your school colors, whether it be your college campus or your high school, whatever you prefer. But gather up your colors and your supplies. Meet me back and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so to get started on this bracelet, we will need to put a stop bead at the end of your thread. I am using black colored th thread today, even though I do have some white seed beads here. I believe the black will look a little bit better. Plus, that's kind of the theme that I'm wanting to do anyway, is black and green. So I have about, I'd say maybe four or five inches worth of thread um, after the stop bead. That's so when we are done with everything, we can go back and add our loop to our cup button at the end um, of the bracelet. So we're going to be doing square stitch on quite a bit of the bracelet today. So if you don't know square, square stitch, you should know it by the end of this bracelet. So to start off, we're going to start off with two of our 8 O's. And this is in the black color. And let that fall down to the end. Now, for square stitch, it's very similar to ladder stitch as well. Some people call it ladder stitch. So to do this, we're going to go straight through the first bead again. And this will have our beads sit like this. To get to where we add the next bead, we go straight back up the second bead. And so we want our beads to sit essentially on top of each other like that. So I'm going to go through these beads one more time just to add a little bit of stability, especially when you first start off the, the square stitch. It can be a little loose sometimes. So I went back through the first bead, now I'm going to go back through the second bead one more time to get to where I can add more beads. So there you go. Okay, so now you want to add eight of your eight O's. So I've got four, six, eight. Your thread is coming out of that second bead. I want to want you to circle through that second bead. So when you pull that down to everything, you have a loop sitting there. Go back through your first four of your 8-0s. Now we're going to pick up another 8-0 and then go back through the last four 8-0s that you had added and continue on through the first bead. So now, in your loop, you should have a total of 10 beads. You have the four on each side and the one on the two ends. So now we're going to be doing more square stitch. So move on to your next bead in line, just the one bead. Pick up an 8 -o, and then we're going to go right back through that same bead. And then orient the bead to where it sits. On top of each other like that. Now move on to your second bead. Add an 8 -0. Go back through that second bead. Now if you want to you can go ahead and move on to the third bead. Just takes that one less step that you have to do. So now we're on that third bead. So add an 8 -0. We're going to do this all the way around until we get back to the first bead. So continue to add on your 8 -0s. So hopefully the green beads, the 11 -0s that are sitting over there, aren't causing too many issues because they are green and we use a green screen and everything so hopefully it's not flickering around too much 
where it causes a problem. But I have been wanting to do a project in the school colors of the school that my daughter goes to, which is green and black. So I've been wanting to do a project like that. So unfortunately, that means I have to use green beets. So hopefully it's not too much of a, of a problem. And I'm adding my last bead right now. I'm going to go ahead and go back through that first bead. So that is the first bead that we added at the very beginning. Flipping it around so it's easier to hold. So now it looks like that. So now we need to get ourselves oriented so we can start adding beads on the outside. So we're on the inner circle right here. We're going to move our thread and needle to the outer circle again. So it's that very, very first bead that we added. And then when you do that, you're now set, set up to where you can start adding beads around the edge. So when you're on the tip beads here and here, you're going to add three beads. You're going to add a 15, an 11, and a 15. And then move on through to the next bead. Now in between the next three sets of beads, until you get to that tip again, you're just going to add, add an 11 -o. So on either side of the tip is where you're going to have your three sets of beads. So we're going to add the three 11s in between all of that. And then now you're back up to one of your tip beads. So we got the 15, 11, 15 again. Go through that tip bead. We're still on the tip bead side, so we're going to do another 15, 11, 15. And go back down that one. Then you have three more 11 O's to add. There's one, two, and the third 11 O. And then now we're back at the beginning, so we're going to add the 15, 11, 15. And then now, go ahead and go back through these beads one more time. And I will meet you back when you're back at the very beginning again. Okay, so now your thread should be coming out of that very first bead again, down at the very bottom down here. What we're going to do now is we're going to move into the interior row again so we can add our iris duo that will end up sitting on top of this marquee shape that we just added. Alright, so to get to that spot, we're coming out of this very first one. We need a square stitch into the interior row. So go through that bead. And then we need to move through one more bead in that succession. So once you're here in this in this spot, now we're going to add our iris duo. So make sure that you're going in the correct direction, that your iris duos are sitting flat on your bead mat. And where I'm sitting at right now, this iris duo, you would have to go through the bottom hole from the right to the left. So put that on your needle. Now you want to go through, you're coming out of this bead right here on this side you want to go through the two beads that are on the opposite side of your marquee shape, the interior row of them, so that way you can orient your iris do on top of the marquee shape. Once that's sitting there, then we're going to circle around by going through the other hole of the iris duo and then to lock this down we go through those two middle holes or two middle beads on this side of the marquee 
So once you go through those two metal beads, now we're going to add some embellishments around the iris dew in the center. So go ahead and go back through the first hole that we went through in the iris duo. We're going to add four 15s and then go through the second hole. We're going to add four more 15s, go back through the first hole. If you catch on to one of the 15s perfectly fine, we're going to go through those anyway. So I caught on to the first 15, go ahead and go through the last three and come out. Now we're going to add three 15s, an 11 and three 15s. And then we're going to go through the four 15s on the other side of the iris duo. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Now your 11 o is probably sitting a little off kilter from the tip of the iris duo. That is fine. We're going to go through these beads one more time to help that kind of sit a little bit more even. So after you get your three, three 15s, 11 and three 15s on your thread, go back through these seven beads on this side. We're going to skip the 11 0 there at the tip. So we're going to skip that 11 0. Then go back through the 10 beads, the 10 15 0's on this side. And there again, skipping the 11 0 on this side as well. And then go back through seven, the first seven beads on this side. And that should get you back to where your hole is on your iris duo. Okay, so I'm coming out of that seventh bead. I'm going to go ahead and go through the iris duo. I'm going to make sure that my thread is going underneath the beads on this side of the iris duo underneath the 15s. Okay, so this is where the thread is coming out of, is right in here. So we need to get to where we can add on the next one. So your thread is nearest this bead up here at top. So here's your topmost two beads, those are the two points, and then these are the beads that are sitting right next to the point. So on the interior row, you want to go through that bead that is sitting next to the top bead, and if you can, go ahead and go through that tip bead, the top one up there, on the interior row. Then we're going to move up to the top bead in the exterior row. Now we'll be set up to where we can add on our next marquee shape. So go ahead and get that finished and then I'll show you next. Okay, so to get the next one started, you need to add two more um, of your 8 O's in a square, sti square stitch fashion. So put an 8 O on your thread, circle, circle around the 8 O that you're coming out of. So your beads sitting on top of each other. Go ahead and pass through these beads one more time. And then now you're coming out of that original 8 the original 8 in the marquee shape. We need to move up to the next one so we can add our next 8 So put another 8 on and then circle around this one. Make sure it's sitting on top of each other like that again. So go back through these beads one more time again and get yourself back oriented to the next bead. 
and this is how you get yourself started for the next one because now you're to that point where you need to add eight 11 O's no eight O's eight eight O's and then circle back through and then go through your first four which is essentially the same steps that we did last time add your last 8 for this marquee shape. Go back down the other four on the other side. Proceed through the first one. So now you have your 10 in the center, your circle, and then move yourself to the first one in the circle to add your extra square stitch to. So this is essentially the same step as the other the previous steps. So if you need to rewind and continue on to the length of what you would like for your bracelet. For a bracelet that is about a seven and a quarter inch, you would need nine of your iris duos. So continue on and I will meet you back to show you how to get the cut button on when you're finished. Okay, so now you're down to the end of your design and I went ahead and I did nine of the little marquee shapes. And I'll end up with about a seven and a quarter to about a seven and a half, somewhere around in there, inch bracelet. So let's add our cut button. So to do that, we're going to make a little bit of a V right here, and then we'll go through the cut button. To do that, we're going to add our 80 like we've been doing, as if we were to add another one of these, one of the marquee shapes. So go ahead and square stitch or ladder stitch your 80 to the previous 8 -0. and again I'm gonna go through this a couple of times especially with it being where the cut button is going to sit so give it a little bit more stability there again now we're gonna do a series of beads and then we're gonna go up to the bottom up through the bottom of the cut button so we're gonna do an 11 8 11 8 so two 11s and two 8s and then go up through one of your holes through the bottom side of your cut button and then come through we're gonna decorate the top since that cut button is already black to begin with I'm gonna go ahead and just add an 11 a 15 and an 11 so I get some of the other colors in there go down the other side then add your 8 and 11 combo again so this time start off with an 8 and then do an 11, then 8, 11. And then when you go, you want to go through your first 8 that you added on this side in the same direction. So we can go back through all these beads that we just added at least one more time. Twice if you can, or two more times if you can. Just depending on the size of your thread, the size of your needle. Because... The more times you put thread through, sometimes it can really clog up the beads. It also depends on the size of your thread because of the thickness. And I'm pretty sure I can get through this at least one other time. So it'll be three strands through the cut button. Now if you get to the top of the button again, you cannot go through all of your beads here. Like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get through those or not. You can just skip the beads and just go straight down the other hole if you have to. Which, that's what I'm going to do on this one. And, once you get through here, you can either tie off your thread and then move down to your ending thread over here, your start bead and everything, so we can do our loop. Or you can weave yourself back through your bracelet again and get down to the other end. So whichever is more convenient for you. So now that we got our cut button on, I'll meet you back in just a second so we can do the loop. Okay, so I ended up moving my thread all the way back down the product again. Projects, excuse me, going through some of the beads just to reinforce them and everything. So that's where this, what this is sitting right here. Then I just um, tied it off to a couple of the beads underneath and then just left a line, a small line here. So when I get done with my starter thread that I've already taken the stop bead off of, 
Then I'm going to weave back to where this is sitting at and then tie that together, burn it off, and I'll be done. So to do our loop, the biggest thing that you always have to make sure is you have to double check your loop size before you actually close it off. There has been several times that I have gone through my beads and realized that the loop is not big enough and or is too big for the button itself. So it's one thing you have to be very careful about. And I just realized way back here, I kind of wrapped some of my thread around my beads. So I'm going to have to fix that. I'll get that fixed in a little bit. So let's get our loop on. We're going to start our loop just like we started the other ones and all these other little marquee shapes. Get one 8 on your bead and wrap through the current 8 that it is coming out of, your thread is coming out of. Square stitch or ladder stitch that on and do that twice. Now on this button, which is the the normal cut button, this one, I ended up being able to essentially copy the marquee shape. So I added all the beads in the same fashion. So we start off with the a 15, 11, 15, and then we go into the pattern of an 8, 11, 8, 11, 8, 11, and an 8. So that way you have eights with three of, a, of your 11s in between them. So it's four eights and then three 11s. And then you do your 15, 11, 15 again. And then we're at the top peak. So now we're essentially at this bead right up in here. And then you just do the opposite of what you just did. So 15, 11, 15 again. And then you have your four eights with three 11s in between. Oops. And then you have one more 15, 11, and a 15. And now you're back at your beginning again. So go ahead and go through your loop down here, or your 8 to create your loop. Now you can do this in a couple of different ways. I tighten mine up wrap it around my finger like that just to test it and I've already tested this so I already know it's gonna work and you just test to make sure that your button goes through your loop okay because we're gonna go through this at least one more time <clears throat> so then just go back all through your beads that you just added one more time without skipping them like I just did And then before I tie it off, I do one more check. Every time you add thread to your loop, it tightens it up a little bit more. So it's always a good idea that you check it again because there's always that possibility that adding that second and or third th strand of thread through your loop may tighten it up too much to where it may end up just being too tight to where you just really cannot get your beat your button through that. So I'm gonna test it one more time. And I'm still pretty good with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. <clears throat> now my starter thread is getting a little small. I can probably go through that loop one more time, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm good with it. And then I'm going to go through that 8-0 and then down into the 8 in the center because that is where my thread is at at the back. And then it is over here on this side. So I'm going to work my way around the interior portion on the back side of this. I'm going to come together right there, tie it off, and then your bracelet will be completed. Thanks so much for watching my Marquee March bracelet. Now don't forget, you can use different school colors of whatever school that you have graduated from or have um, plans on attending. So either college campuses or high school campuses, whatever you prefer. Also, this would make a really good earring if you just do the one component and that could be a nice little dainty earring. So those are some different ideas for different people. So don't forget to like and subscribe to Potomac's page here so that way you get notifications of when they come out with new videos. Thank you so much, everyone. Y'all have a good rest of the day.